What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to talk about what's going on with the overall market and give you guys my projection for Tesla for the end of the year, where I think Tesla is likely going to be going and how the market is going to likely affect Tesla. I'm also going to talk about the S&P 500, SPY, and a couple of other tickers and break down my view for even the start of 2024 and what I see the market doing for the next few months. But before I break anything down all this information, before I get to any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. The offer ends in just about 10 days from now, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with Tesla and the markets. So it comes to Tesla, you can see that this thing may have a short-term decline, looking at a potential head and shoulders-like pattern, a bearish divergence that developed intraday, and also because of the market, right? The market was pumping very, very hard, and this basically gave us more information about how the algorithm of Tesla works, because news is going to be a big factor, but if there's no like super bad piece of news that comes out and the market is moving similarly, the market could drag Tesla up and Tesla could follow the trend that's forming. So let me give you more proof of this. I mean, if you just look at the overall seasonality, so Tesla was not in like a really negative cycle uh, for the past week. For this week, there wasn't like all this super bearish news that came out. Tesla already dropped and we just started to see, the, you know, Tesla follow the market and start recovering. So going back, however, if you look at the last few months, you will notice that if we start off from like, uh, besides the time when Elon Musk was like selling shares, which caused Tesla to really underperform, besides that period, you can see Tesla fell with, with SPY very similarly. They pumped together around March of 2023. They came down together, then they pumped very similarly, approaching the month of August. Then from August, approaching the month of, uh, right over here at the very end of uh, August, uh, we ended up just continuing to drop. And then once we got to September, we got a little pump together. They came down together, they pumped together, and they both tanked in October. And now they're recovering together. So the point I'm making is that the stock market is run by algorithms. They're like robots that are dictating supply and demand. And they're going to be continuing to affect the way these stocks move. So the reason I'm saying this is because I believe for the end of the year, the market's going to move very similarly. And I think that we're going to see Tesla just continue to be impacted by SPY and the market. So let me give you another example of proof of this. If you look at Tesla on the left and you look at uh, SPY on the right side, you're going to notice something very interesting. So they're not exactly the same, right? They're not perfect, but they were declining together. You guys could see this. Look at the trends on them. It's very similar. And then look at the last five days on SPY compared to the last five days of Tesla, you will see that Tesla basically declined right here on that Monday when the market opened. We had one last decline on Tesla. We finally bought it by Tuesday because of some bad news that came out. And then finally, when there was no more like super, super bad pieces of news coming out for those days specifically, we started getting some decent news. The algorithms took over and they ended up dictating Tesla. And for the last four days, Tesla went from 194 going all the way up to 226 before it cooled off a little bit. And you could see, you know, that that happened when SPY was pumping from 409 to 436. So the algorithms have continued to affect Tesla. And I'm bringing this up because it's very important to understand this. As time goes on, I anticipate there's more upside coming to the markets. Okay, I think for the medium term, there's going to be more upside for SPY and Tesla. But for the short term, for next week, there might be a little downside. We might see a little decline to cool off these indicators. SPY has tight resistance, resistance excuse me, at 438. And also, we've been pumping so hard in a very short period of time. So we're due to pull back a little bit. And the algorithms may affect Tesla in the same manner. But for the medium term, as we approach December and beyond, I still anticipate much more upside. I think Tesla is going to bounce uh, even approaching the end of November. And I think that there's still more upside coming. So I wanted to now break down my history about something I've been saying about the markets. In my videos, I've been saying nonstop that there's going to likely be a very nice pump for November. Expect a November squeeze. If you look at the market, Tesla went from 194 to 226. SPY went, went from 409 all the way up to 436. I also told everyone that, look, 
When you look at the market, we were likely in a bottoming process, looking at our McCullen volume summation index and many other technical indicators, saying the market was going to bottom soon, a bounce should have been coming. Those ended up being very, very correct. Now, Tesla could decline more. It is still possible. But as long as we hold above the 200 EMA on the weekly time frame, Tesla is going to be completely fine. And there's going to likely be more upside coming anyways. One belief I have about Tesla is that as we approach the end of November, so first off, Tesla might decline for the short term, of course, right, going to next week, but it's not going to be a big crash. It's just going to be another typical decline, a very healthy pullback. And then Tesla is going to bounce and start pushing up even higher and start filling this gap. I think we're going to fill this gap possibly by the end of November. I think Tesla is going to reach 243 very, very soon. The daily is looking quite decent. It may pull back a little bit, then just continue to push as we approach the end of November. So what else supports this claim would be three other things. Uh, actually, maybe like four of them. The first thing is, even though Tesla's price price ratio is declining, it's approaching this like bottom like area which means that Tesla might start to perform very similar to that of SPY. If SPY starts declining a bit just temporarily alongside uh, the NASDAQ and many other ETFs and indices, Tesla is going to likely, likely decline for the short term. But for the month of December and beyond, there's likely going to be more upside as the price price ratio will start to uptrend and Tesla should start outperforming the markets. Additionally, look at how similar Tesla SPY Tesla and SPY have been alongside Tesla and the QQQ. Tesla and the QQQ are almost identical. Look at how similar they've been moving for the last seven, eight months. They're in very, very similar trends. And I think that this is going to perpetuate. Now, to add on to this, what's the second piece of evidence we have? Well, seasonality. Seasonality is something I've been talking about, right? Looking at seasonality. Seasonality told us that August, September, and October are going to show declines in the markets. That is exactly what happened on SPY and also Tesla. That's when Tesla was declining. So we started to see some very similar trends. But on top of that, when you go back on the chart, whoops, right here, we tend to get a very monstrous rally going into November, going into November, all of them show that. And that's what ended up happening, which I think is just pretty crazy. And it was a crazy rally. I mean, SPY went from 409 all the way up to 436 in just five days. That's just insane. Absolutely insane. And it's due for a pullback because of that. It just shows how crazy that bounce was. It just shows how powerful these bulls are. So this seasonality suggests that we're either going to decline a little bit for the next one to two weeks, maybe one to one and a half weeks, a small decline, or it could just be like a, a slight decline, sideways price action, uh, like the top two over here. And, and then we just continue higher. It's going to be one of those two. I think SPY is going to de decline a little bit, then trade sideways for like a week to week and a half, consolidate a bit find its base, and then just continue higher going into December, going into the end of November. I think there's a lot more upside coming. So seasonality supports this. Seasonality has been right since July. Since July, it's been almost spot on. Uh, and I believe it's going to continue like this. The reason why it wasn't spot on during the first half is because the market was just already down very big and the market was just starting to recover. It was continuing to recover as we approached June, and that's why it didn't like uh, play out as perfectly. And then going into like July, like I said earlier, for July, that's when it like really, that's when we really start to see this play out. And then August through November have been spot on so far. And I think it's going to continue for December. Now, another indicator was our McCullen volume summation index, giving us indicators that the market was at a bottom. And everyone was becoming very fearful. We saw the market at extreme fear, which triggered the bottom. Once again, guys, I was calling out the bottom for the market. I was saying Tesla is going to likely bounce in November. I was saying this for SPY as well. Uh, I'm not always correct when it comes to predictions. Nobody is always correct. I'm not perfect. I'm a human. But this is one prediction I was correct about. And I believe that my prediction for the end of the year is also going to be correct. So moving forward, uh, we're going to be looking at these indicators moving forward. They were telling us the market has been bottoming, and that's what happened. And finally, uh, let me just show you one last thing. Right, where is it? Right here, we also had uh, the puts and call uh, ratios going up like crazy. So we saw a lot of shorting in the markets as people were panicking. And if you look at SPY specifically, you're going to notice that there were crazy amounts of shorts that were opened on it. We had over a million puts expiring on Friday for SPY, and we saw how SPY closed, very decent close. And then moving forward from this period, and beyond, uh, throughout November and December, we have millions and millions of puts expiring either every Friday or every other Friday. 
lots and lots of shorts are expiring. They're making up the majority of positions. And we're seeing lots of high puts to call ratios. So for next week, for example, we have a 1.84 puts to call ratio, over 500,000 puts expiring on SPY. The week after that, we have over, this is like almost 2.7 uh, million puts expiring, 2.27 put to call ratio for the week after that. And we're just continuing to see millions of puts expiring for December. We have a 4.06 puts to call ratio for one of these weeks in December. So many puts were being bought. People were hedging. They're betting on a crash, saying, you know, the end is coming, this and that. And I was the one telling you, hey, the market is not going to crash from here. It's going to bounce for November. And that's what ended up happening. So this could be a sign of something else that's about to happen for the markets. And this is why I'm going to give you guys my projection. So for the end of the year, let me make this clear. SPY is going to decline for now. It's going to decline for the short term, it's going to fill some of these gaps, and it's going to bounce eventually. I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to break above 440 and we could be approaching the highs we saw from August. If we break those highs, we could see SPY get very close to all-time highs as we approach the end of the year, if not early 2024. However, even if the market pumps like crazy, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun, but don't become way too bullish because remember what i've been talking about when everyone turns too bullish the market makers are going to do their little manipulation all over again when everyone turns too bearish that's when they manipulate the stocks and i think that this trend is going to continue into 2024. for that reason even though i can't say this with 100 percent certainty i can't predict the future like super far out like uh you know six months out with super high accuracy uh, I don't know if there's going to be a new a new pandemic or anything like that. But as of right now, given the current circumstances, I believe there's not going to be one big crash. I don't think there's going to be a 2008-style crash. I don't think it's going to happen. I think that what's going to happen is the market's going to rally approaching the end of the year and Tesla's going to follow the trend. Then I think that there's going to be another decline in 2024, maybe by like February or so. And it's not going to be a crash. It's just going to be another correction, just like what we saw here between August and October. So the market could decline a bit because of the recession. But then once everyone turns bearish and all the shorts pile in again, the cycle is going to continue. The market makers are going to pump the market all over again, and we're going to see another bull rally. So I think that we're going to switch between bull rallies and bear rallies back and forth and back and forth for the next couple of months. And then to end 2024 because of the election, they're going to pump the markets again due to manipulation, right? So you may think I sound crazy when I say that. I was the guy that told you that the market's going to likely pump for November. I also called downside for this period between August and October. All of those ended up playing out. Uh, I, I believe there's going to be a decline coming for uh, November now from this point on. There's going to be a slight decline before more upside for December to end the year. And I believe that because of all the manipulation, because of all these you know, retail investors that have entered the market, the market is not going to do what a lot of people are expecting. A lot of people were looking at 2008 saying we're about to, to enter a very similar position. A lot of people believe there's going to be a huge crash coming. But I believe that if there's going to be a crash, everyone's going to load up on puts and the market makers know that and they're not going to pay out all those premiums. And if everyone's expecting it, it's likely not going to happen the way everyone is thinking. So many people, if you look at the puts that were being opened, there were so many puts on SPY. Everyone was thinking the market was going to crash right here in October. We're going to see the market hit new lows for November, right? The exact opposite happened. And that's why you need to be open-minded. So once again, my view of Tesla in the markets would be more potential upside that's coming. I think Tesla is going to bounce very nicely, uh, at least for the end of the year. There may, there may be a small decline for the short term, but overall, Tesla is looking bullish. Now, another, another thing that's worth noting is the overall trend on Tesla is also bullish because when you zoom far out of the chart, super far out, you're going to notice we have a giant inverse head and shoulders on Tesla. It is still valid. And as long as Tesla holds that 200 weekly EMA, it's going to be just fine. We have a nice inverse head and shoulders. It is possible that Tesla kind of like pumps you know, all the way back up to these high levels comes back down a little bit and just continues going sideways for a few months before it just continues to uptrend and eventually push back to all-time highs. That's eventually going to happen, but not yet. So I could see Tesla continuing to range trade for a bit between supply and demand. We could see Tesla pump back up to these highs uh, that we saw earlier on, come back down, pump again, and come back down throughout 2024 for some time. 
uh, entering what you could deem as like a kangaroo market where we go back and forth and back and forth. That could happen for 2024 because of the recession and other macroeconomic factors. But then as time goes on in 2024, Tesla will eventually break out with the market. And I anticipate the market is going to remain bullish to end the year. Now, it sounds crazy, but don't forget the election is coming. They're not going to let the market crash, in my opinion, uh, approaching the election. It's not going to look good for many of these politicians. Not going to be looking good for other things like that. And then don't forget about the fact that so many people are expecting a crash for 2024. We're not going to likely get a big crash. We're going to get like bear rallies and bull rallies, just like what we've been seeing for the last, uh, what, six months, seven, eight months. I believe the trend is just going to continue. So, for example, if you look at Tesla, you will notice that we had lots of instances where Tesla had this bull rally, we had a bear rally here. We're going to enter into the next bull rally, then a bear rally, and just back and forth for some time until we approach, you know, something big to change in the trend, which I believe is going to pump the markets more. So that's my view right now. My view could change as time goes on, but I just want to make this as clear as possible uh, that the market has more upside for the end of this year. I want to focus more on that for the time being. And that's my view for 2024 for the time being. All right. So it sounds crazy. I understand it sounds unbelievable, but what also sounded crazy and unbelievable would be some kind of rally for SPY. If we went back, if we time traveled one week, we went back one week and I told you SPY is at 409 and next week we're going to see 436. Nobody would believe me. It would sound too crazy and it actually happened. So unbelievable, crazy things that people do not expect could happen. Be open-minded in a market like this and continue to read the trends. Predicting one year out is kind of tricky besides calling like upsides in stocks. They do pump 75 plus percent of the time. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is predicting every little nuanced move for the next two years is kind of tricky. And predicting that the more shorter term timeframes is more feasible. So I anticipate upside for the end of the year. We may cool off for the short term, but for the medium term, we're still looking bullish. I think that we have some more fun price action coming. All right, so we'll be watching to see what happens. Remain calm, cool, and collected, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. The QQQ is going to follow the same trend as well. This thing is going to cool off a little bit for the short term, then rally for the medium term, then enter a kangaroo market probably for 2024's start before we see more upside as the year goes on. And that's my view. And I think that this is going to perpetuate throughout the entire market. That's my view, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Remain calm, cool, and collected, and I'll see you guys very soon. All right. Thank you, and peace out.